How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. This is an RPG Maker MV tutorial. Uh, it's going to be the beginning of the Chrono Engine uh, tutorial mini-series because I keep getting asked about it and um, I haven't spent a lot of time with this plugin yet, but I started messing with it last night. Um, pretty awesome plugin, I will say. And it's got different modes in it and there's just so much information to take in. This is going to be like, let's scratch the surface, let's get you started, let's uh, explain the idea of how it works and how you use a map to store events to, use, to create your skills that way and how all that nonsense works. Um, so basically I'm going to put a link to Mog Hunters. This is Mog Hunters Chrono Engine plugin. I'm going to put a link to Mog Hunters demo. This is Mog Hunters demo that I'm playing here to give you an example of, uh, basically what, um, we're going to do a tutorial on and, and using this plugin, um, to, to create enemies, to create items, to create skills, to create weapons, to, uh, whatever, you know, everything I can think of. Um, anyway. This is a skill I created, the the Dark Arts. But basically, it's just like the Final Fantasy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the Chrono Trigger uh, battle system. Where you have like, a, it's sort of like an ATB system, uh, but you can have like a dual text and, and triple text if, if you have the, the people up for it. Like, let's see if we can wait a second and then we'll do an X strike. Wait, who can do, who can do X strike? Here we go, X strike. And that's going to take two people, right? One, two. And you can even do like the triple text and everything. It's really cool. So um, if this kind of combat system is something you're interested in and you want to create a, a game using this sort of like battle system, um, then this tutorial series is going to be for you. The first thing we're going to do is just go over like you know the plugin some of the parameters and and basically how to make a skill i think this will probably be the first part of it to how do you make a skill and how do you install it and how do you make a skill well i highly recommend you would you would download um the demo uh mock hunters demo the chrono engine demo in fact that's probably the only way you're going to get this plugin um because it's packaged in a demo <clears throat> but it's uh Probably the smarter way to distribute your plugins, I think, because uh, you, you're you going looking for one plugin and you get a combination of plugins that all work well together that were all made by the same person to, to... Anyway, what I'm trying to say is like all of the plugins that were selected for this project to work are already made and in the project, so you use this demo as like your starting point. And you, you don't want to copy these maps, even though they're nice maps and everything. You want to change as much as you possibly can, as always, when it comes to, like, taking a, a demo project and then, you know, making it into your own project or whatever. Always change as much as you can, but we're going to basically, I'm going to go over as, as much of this as I can. So let's finish this fight and let's jump into the engine and take a look at, like, how does this skill system work? Like, how do you design what he jumps to and the animation and, like, it's it sounds all crazy. How do you even build the skill for it? Well, it's kind of complicated at first, but once you get the hang of it, you're going to go, oh, that's interesting. So, anyway, let's go ahead and um, close the game. We could actually keep the music up. I actually love this background music. So, inside of this project, you're going to notice that there's a map called Tool Map. And this map just has a bunch of events on it. And these events don't do anything. They just have comments on them. But that's how you program the skills. So, if we look in this top left corner, we see we've got a potion and item. So, to make this a, a potion, you have to assign this event a tool ID. So, this tool is assigned item ID 1, right? And you use the same number... Or, or you don't use the same number as you would the actual item in the database. Let me go to the database and show you what I'm talking about. So, tool item ID 1. So, this is saying that this event is going to be played when you use the item or whatever this, this event ID is called. It's kind of complicated. Uh, we'll go over the rest of this and we'll jump into what I'm talking about, like uh, I, item ID and tool ID and, and, and all that stuff. So, tool duration. This is how long it's going to take to uh before it, when it starts to finish 
how many frames. This is the pose that it's going to, uh, you double click and you insert a comment and you type in what you want the comment to do. So basically they're all in the help file. Let's look at the help file real quick. So the first thing you're going to notice is it's all in Portuguese. Yes, that's right. So unless you read Portuguese, you're going to have a hard time understanding what everything does. So let's see, we're going to go to the Chrono Engine. Chrono Engine. And you'll see that all of this is in Portuguese. Oh my god. Well, it's partially translated to English, but some of it's in Portuguese. Luckily for you, I've already gone to Google Translate and done every little bit of it. So here we have the Portuguese to English translation help file. So all of the help file stuff is now a lot easier to read if you don't speak Portuguese. I'm going to put a link to this uh, text file in uh, the description. I'll put a, Google, a link to uh, my Google Drive link for this text file. You might want to open it up in Notepad++ or uh, Sublime because if you try to open it up in the text viewer, the, you know, uh, you might get symbols that aren't there. like weird symbols I don't know why it's something with Unicode but anyway um, so now you have the full ex the full help file all in English linked to that in the description so you won't have to be using this and trying to guess what stuff does so you can have this up like on one tab <clears throat> and then you can have you know you can have uh, your your other things up on the other side or whatever so while you're building your your events you can reference the help file. It's just like building action sequencing, except you're building an, an event sequence to play when you use a skill. Okay, so let's look at the parameters real quick while we're here. So tool map ID, this is an important one because it needs to know where to look for the events. So this right here is the first map. Now, how do we know this is the first map? Well, because the map number will tell you at the bottom right there. So it'll say 001 colon tool map, and then it'll show you the, the resolution of the map, 17 by 13. So this is map number one, right? So if I had all my tools on this demonstration map, then I would want to be using three on the map, uh, on, on the plugin parameters for the Chrono Engine. So tool map ID. If you're using this project, then that's already set up and established, and it's already set to one. Um, battle mode is going to determine if you're going to use uh, the active battle system or chrono mode. The ABS mode is also really cool, but we'll get into that in a separate thing. We're going to stick with the chrono mode for this because this is what I've already gotten, like four or five requests in the past week, a uh, few days even. So, um, battle sensor range. This is how far um, the, play the enemies can, s can detect you before the battle starts. So if you get within three tiles of a fight of an enemy, the battle will start. Uh, maximum battle members, pretty simple, right? How many people do you want in your party? Uh, ATB mode, if you want it to be full active, which means while you're looking at your skills, they're still, AT bar, ATB bars are going, the enemy's still hitting you while you're picking your skills, you set that to two. Semi-active, which means it's going to keep going until you go into one of the menus, and while you're in the menus, it's going to pause, but as soon as you select something to, and then target, it's going to resume and keep going. And then wait, it will pause at every uh, possible time that's convenient. So if you're targeting, it's going to pause. If you're selecting a skill, it's going to pause. If you're, you know, whatever you're doing, zero uh, mode is going to pause. It. So the hardest mode would be two full active and the easiest would be zero weight. So it's up to you, whatever you want to do. ATB max, um, this is basically a number you want to mess with, determine how long do you want the things to charge up. Um, states duration, how long will the state apply by default? I think when you use uh, a comment note tag in the event, oh man, there's still so much to learn with this. Diagonal movement, you can control like uh, up, down, left, right, or diagonal movement with this. Set that to false if you just want up, down, left, right. Attack command, do you want the attack command to be on the menu? Shield commands, uh, all of these, do you want these commands to be on the, the scrolling menu? If so, set those to true. If not, set them to false. Select the buttons you want to use for attacking, for using your shield, for using a skill, and all of that. You also select the button you want to use to assign uh, something to that hotkey. Uh, dash. I mean, all this is pretty self-explanatory. Some of it's in... Uh, well, most of it's in Portuguese. Um, what else would be confusing? Escape button, that's to run away from battle. I'm just trying to look for something that could throw people off. <sighs> you really don't need to mess with any of this, to be honest. The font size. Phase axis. 
I don't know what the phase does. What does phase X axis and Y axis do? I don't know. Result. I'm sure this is just moving sprites around uh, and where they're drawn or bounding boxes. So you can mess with these if you know what they do or if you're just curious. You can change, oh, okay, this is where, yeah, right, this is where sprites and image and stuff is drawn. So you can decide, um, like, say if your character's larger, you want to draw the sprites higher so it looks like it appears above your head, not like on your body, or wherever. So it's up to your preference if you want um, the, your experience to pop up and show you got it um, at a higher location, you would just subtract from the, the Y value, right? Because you add to the Y, it's going to move it down. So that, I guess that makes sense. <clears throat> same thing for escaping okay that's pretty much it like i said a link to the description uh linked in the description to this plugin as well as the 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 file i converted the help file that mog hunter that mog hunter made i converted to english and all of that is uh in the description so okay let's move on to the main thing about this uh skills so how do you make a skill well it's kind of tricky because you have to bind a tool ID to a skill and you have to make that tool ID on your tool map and you have to reference the event number right so this is skill number seven right fire but skill number seven is using tool ID number 16 so let's look at fire okay so we're looking for 16 and we can see what number the event is in the bottom right corner so we can see that 6 12 13 this is 16 fireball the magic so let's look at this event <clears throat> how do you design fireball well you don't even need to give it an image you don't even get I don't think you even need to give it a name you have to give it some comments inside of the contents and it doesn't need to be triggered by anything so it's just actually it'll, it'll be this event contents will be referenced by the skill when it's called so we set up that skill to be um, tool ID space colon space 16 that's event number 16. We set up our tool map to be map number one. So when we cast fireball, it's going to try to find map one and event 16. So it's going to go directly to this spot and read down this list just like it was an action sequence. It's pretty crazy, right? So now what we need to do is since we linked a skill to an event, we need to relink this event back to that skill. You can have one skill call different events and that's this can link to another thing, could do another thing, and they have chain events and all kinds of crazy stuff. But this is a simple one skill to an event, one event back to that skill. So how do you link it? Well, you set the tool skill ID. So you set a comment, insert new uh, flow control, you set a comment there, and inside there, you're going to use what you see inside the help file. So going back to the help file in English, you're going to go down to where it shows the, uh, the tool system, and you can see your tool event com uh, comments. And you basically take this right here and it'll tell you what it does tool item id defines damage based on an item id well we're going to define the, the value in the damage formula of the fireball skill not the id the item so we're going to say tool skill id defines damage based on ability id so now that we've got this defined to seven it's going to look at skill number seven when we cast fireball just like it should it, and it's going to reference this. Do you see how it has to bounce out of this event or out of the database into an event, take that data, parse it and send it back to the to the database uh, and and then execute all of that. So it's kind of complex, but it's really awesome because you can use an event to control uh, an action sequence and you can get crazy looking action sequencing with uh, not as much work once you figure out the raw system. So basically we bound fireball the tool space colon space 16. Uh, this is capital sensitive and some of the spacing can give you give you problems. For example, if I go tool ID colon space 16, this has caused me problems. This is when I was making a capture skill, it didn't work. So, um, and then I went space right there and it worked. So in Yanfly, all of Yanfly plugins, it's like, this is how it is, right? It's like you have stuff and then value, you know, like the thing and then value. But for Mog Hunter plugin, this Chrono Engine, all of the note tags will look like this. Stuff, space, colon, space, value, right? So we've got tool ID, space, colon, space, value of 16. Boom. And then we... 
you know, we we use this skill. It references tool 16, it or that uh, tool ID 16, which is on map one. It goes to that event. It takes that info. It parses it back to the to the thing in that event. It's looking for uh, skill ID uh, tool skill ID seven. So once it bounces back here, it gets all of this information and this formula, and then it plays out. Oops, not that one. It plays out the rest of the stuff as well used as using the information that's in the database. So tool duration 60, which how long it's going to take to cast, the the way that the player is going to look when they're casting it, how long they're going to stay in that that pose, um, the way the when, the way the position is like uh where is the player going to be like so if you set tool position to user the player's not going to move the player's going to stand still and then do whatever right um, in this case we set projectile so the player's going to stand still for 60 seconds and then it's going to for the next or not 60 frames one second and then for the next half a second it's going to throw a projectile uh using the tool area line so it's going to throw a fireball in a straight line but it's not good. We're also disabled piercing, so it's not going to go through. You see all the layer, the levels of things. You can have a fireball that pierces through enemies that has a range of one, so that everything it hits in a in a area around it of one tile, then it's like a a moving AOE. Uh, you know, uh, you could make it. Uh, I don't know. It, just so many different things. You can make this a square, and you can make this like five, and then it's just a big five by five square that can just deal AOE damage. Uh, you can have uh, a line attack pierce stuff, it, all kinds of stuff, but you see how that works, right? You, you basically make an event, just name it what it is, what kind of thing it is, give it the, the tool item ID or tool skill ID uh, to reference what it is in the database, give it however many frames of duration you want, the way the player you want, the, the way the, the, the animation the, you want the player to be doing. Uh, how long for that animation the location you can say uh, targets and the player will move to the target and do something you can select if it's projectile if it's uh, if it's uh, what is the other ones tool um, tool projectile and then there was other stuff so what other things disable piercing wait for collision uh, multi hit action times chain actions multiple directions reflect unique so that can only be done once uh, a tool that goes in a diagonal direction, shake the screen, but I mean all kinds of stuff. Really, this is just scratching the surface. We're already 17 minutes in. I wanted to do a 10 minute tutorial and I did 17 minutes and I haven't even scratched the surface. So now you have a basic idea of what you would do to create a new skill, right? So this skill is a skill I created. I, I made uh, tool ID 61 and I did all of this. So on tool ID 61, <clears throat> now I didn't just pick 61, I created a new event, and you see in the top left of this event it says ID colon 061. Also if I just left click on it, I can see in the bottom right that it's showing 061 right there. So I didn't just pick a an, an random ID, I made a new event, now this would be ID event 62. So whatever I put inside here, if I want to call this from a skill, I have to reference uh, tool ID 62. So in this one, I'm saying tool ID space colon space 61, and now when I call that skill, it's going to use this, uh, it's going to look for this, it's going to say tool skill ID 30, so it's going to spit back information about the, in the database for skill number 30, it's going to give you a duration of 80 frames, it's going to make you look like you're casting and you're standing there uh, for 80 seconds, but it's actually going to make you move towards the target. So this is going to make you move towards the target and cast it. It's got a range of 2 and it's got an area of square, so it's just going to move towards the target, and then for about 80 frames, it's going to, uh, well, actually, about three seconds, it's going to go zoom and do a little animation. And the animation you pick on the the actual animation here is the one it's going to use. But you can also call to use other animations inside here with comments. It, it, man, I could go on forever. Anyway, this is gonna, I'm going to cut this tutorial right here. <clears throat> the next episode, we're going to talk about the next thing, maybe how to make an item or how to do something else. Um... But anyway, links to this plugin in the description, links to the English translation help file in this uh, description of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Uh, thank you for everybody who's supported me and, and just everything that everybody who's helped the channel. If you have special requests, put them in the comments below. If you uh, have something specific you want to see, let me know. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends uh, or anywhere on your Twitter or social media or wherever. I um, would really appreciate that. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.